like an air of arrogance about you almost like you need to be cocky you need to oh, yeah. know that you need to believe that you are better than everyone else it's just a fact both these players have that. Siski is super confident, and he believes that he's the best. And Flo is also extremely confident. If you ever play this man in money matches, you will learn that real fast. And there's a reason why they are both here in winner semis to start things off, Skip. Yep. As you can see, Siski rocking the Siski for Summit tag there. Uh, honestly, if, if you guys want to see some some really good Samus action, definitely get them, give them a nice little vote for Summit. But as we see Flo going in, man, with these strong hits, uh, definitely creating a problem here. But there we go. We got Siski starting to get a little bit of something going through. Got the late hit on that forward air. That was really good. Cool. Yeah, and this is, what, this is what you have to do, especially here on Smashville. You have to overwhelm Dark Samus. You need to keep Siski not from playing the game, which is exactly what we're seeing. This is exactly how Flo took apart Mr. E as well in Winter's side, and it's going to be the key to victory here. But Siski, as we've seen oh, quite a few times, especially in Smashville Tour, he's willing to take that surprise offstage play. But Flo is willing to challenge him every time, Skip. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, that's just what Roy's uh, are all about. Like, I don't think there's a a single like passive boy i mean you might have a bit of passive gameplay but these dudes like you said they are confident they are ready to trade they are ready to throw hands about 99 percent of the time but yeah we'll uh we'll definitely <laughs> see how Flo continues to kind of just dominate here this is definitely a rough first game however the one benefit that i think siski has is that samus and dark samus are two of the heaviest characters in the game and they have a pretty solid recovery game plan that was a beautiful edge guard in that down smash yeah, finally getting something going there. Because that was one minute in, two stocks were gone on Siski already. Now Siski starting to play a bit up close. This character has really good air-to-air -air game. That fair, great on calling out the short hops. That up air, really good for juggles. But you have to worry about if you don't get him to ledge. This is the shortest distance you have to cover to get a ledge trap. And Siski's got to work it every time. Because otherwise, Flo is going to just destroy him for being up close. Especially with punishes like that. I mean, we did just see that upbeat out of shield too. You had mentioned that earlier, so definitely a strong option. Okay, oh, definitely calls out the jump. But Flo, having the recognition to realize that, hey, they cannot continue to go there. They will lose that stock. But popping off here, can they find him when he pulls it out? Yeah, finally get, oh, there we go. The single shot, uh, the, the low shot, but because he was in the air, he was still able to confirm into the dash attack. The late hit of Nair that does hit on both sides. It does catch people off guard sometimes. But 126, if you get maybe another like 30-ish percent with this rage, or maybe less. Up throw does kill, so that's gonna be something Siski can look for, but you have to be careful because one whiff does equal the game for a flow. Or one good edge guard. <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely uh that'll definitely close that out. Flow taking a very strong game one. Uh, I think Siski's definitely confident there because I personally I think Smashville as as you know as great as it can be for characters who just like to throw out buttons, like to get those strong hits in there. I think this is actually a fantastic stage for zoner type characters like Samus. They can control so much of the space as it is. Uh, they can kind of eliminate that tunnel underneath, you know. But Flow absolutely showing us what it takes and what you need to do to be able to kind of really close the gap on characters like that and just, you know, get your advantages, get your strong hits, get your stocks. But I expect to see a larger stage coming out in this game too here. Siski's definitely going to want a little bit more. Room. Yeah, it, it, it varies a lot, right? Because I, I agree with the fact that zoners actually do find ways to take advantage of Smashville. I think it's just because Roy is... Roy, like, it, he can he can zone break you on PS2 in Kalos. So, like having the access to speed that he has to be able to get it is really really difficult to deal with so in a nutshell i think it made sense because i think he was trying to make him like feel comfortable with the idea rush down and then get free ledge traps because he overcommitted. it just didn't work here in game one and i don't think we'll see siski intentionally go back to smashville for the rest of the set all right okay this is a little bit bigger obviously not a, a huge huge stage but definitely a better choice overall i think um you got two platforms you basically kind of create your own space here you say this side's mine that side's yours right which is you know okay look I'll, I'll have my side of the stage but when you're roy having a side of the stage that's all yours to own is the best thing you want to do here so we're gonna see how flo is gonna try and break this wall and try to get their openings on Cisco. Yeah, it sounded like like a used car salesman deal, like it's from Sam. It's like, hey, so you stay over there, I stay over here, <laughs> and, and, funny. and it's so far that's exactly how it's played out. You're right, like slightly more room to work with, a little bit easier for Siski to get that zoning game going, but 
So what they, you know what? They love it. They almost always want to fare from ledge. That morph ball, though, using the bomb as a, uh, a reversal tool from ledge was actually kind of smart. He didn't get anything out of it, unfortunately, because Flo went to the right. But I'd like to see him get a conversion off that later, because that can true combo in the back here if you catch him too quick. Hey, listen, I want to point out that dash attack, right? Dash attack is going to be able to take the stock. You know what actually really set that up was the jab one, two that Siski was somehow able to land. <laughs> this character he somehow got the jab one two and at that point i'm like this game's done this game's decided yeah that move doesn't exist but jab the back and it's basically the jab one two for roy right there and with yep. a good little bit extra uh oomph to it so you're gonna take it out back to even but i really like the way siski's make adjustments so far he's been able to get a lot of like jab one and short hop uh fair call outs that have been working significantly better this is where he's the strongest though ledge trapping and flow just gets through it quickly yeah. Okay, ooh, tried to go for another one there. And probably would have, no, I'm gonna take this stock. I'm sorry, I had to look at the percentages. But definitely looking much better. It was a good start for Siski, but Flo is fighting back. And this is where, you know, it also gets a little scary. You're starting to get up in those percentages where you could lose a stock, but Roy's already up there. That means that Roy's got rage, which means this is gonna be a very tough position to be in. Missing this jab, going the wrong direction here. A fantastic roll from Siski to control the stage. And then Nair as well, creating the pressure. Ooh, okay, I like that so good and also sticking with the f tilt as well to be not very committal on an option at ledge but that gives you a lot of it was so the conditioning was so good he covered three neutral get up slash jump options in a row so he stayed right on top of it and then finally when he decided he knows he's gonna go in because he did it too many times he covers him with the uh the charge shot and even if he doesn't get the hit there he was safe that was really good from siski Dude, I actually like that one situation where he just threw up that up tilt for, from Samus. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That should have been the stock, but falling out. Oh, you don't want to see that. And still not be able to close out the stock. But as I want to say, the up tilt that actually Siski threw out on the left side of the stage was really smart. You had flow at the edge, and Roy's will technically, you know, maybe they'll drop shield and try to get punished, or they're going to try and jump over you. So that actually covered quite a bit of options. Didn't get anything out of it, but just just how Siski's thinking here, I really like it. I really like the game plan they're going for. But this oh is a tough goodness, spot, again, man. to be in. Flow's looking good. Flow does like it does not let up. We saw one whiff grab that led to 37 in a deep edge guard. But now, Siski, did you snipe the jump? He might have sniped it. That forced him to go low. Siski ends up giving up an SD. You'll see he is so far back in his chair right now. That was so that my man Schlop, like that was so rough. You had it. You you got the jump. You forced him to go low. All you needed to get was a trade and you won. But he accidentally shoots a missile off stage, and that gives Flo the game. Oh. Oh, I don't want to see this again. Oh, I can't bear to watch. Oh, I'm going to cover my eyes. Oh, you hate to see it, man. You hate to see it. And as you can see, Siski just leaning back in their chair. And uh, this is not a dub, by the way. We are not these casters. <laughs> but uh, you don't want to see those types of scenarios. And it's just, it's really unfortunate because of the fact that... Um, it's just like that that is such a mentality killer like it, like i'm not gonna say the set's decided here but now you're down 2-0 to a very crucial mistake and that's yep. gonna be sitting in the back of your head well steve Siski, you know can have that mentality to keep that going but look at this 85 percent unanswered to start this game off oh this is oh no this is not looking good no, i will say though like that could get in your head but oh. Siski has uh, been to the blast zone before. Yes, uh, almost lose, almost getting zero to death here, actually. So what I was going to say, Siski has been at the top quite a few times before. Siski has performed very well consistently time and time again. However, currently looking for any chance of hope to try and hit flow at all. 29% free answer. There you go, finally. This is going to be the start. This is going to be the stock. Oh, uh, just misses it. Yeah, I was gonna say, that was, that was a little bit scary there. Oh, wait, dude, okay, Siski's waking up all of a sudden. I thought I thought the game was already over. Oh, my God, how did that connect? <laughs> Upside! Cheater, cheater, back here, dominant stock. <laughs> Ch uh, you know what? All right, I'm gonna. I, I gotta split up chat. Chat, it's time, okay? Flo's currently up two games right now on Siski. Who are you going for? Is Roy your boy, or is it Siski for Summit? Because we see Flo take out that stock. Oh man, hey, I really do like that uh, that jab into the up air though, because uh, you know we we see jab in the back so many times, but then the reverse up air, which I thought was really really neat, and it definitely still secured the stock. You know, Samus is already really high enough as it is, but it definitely probably was a little bit of a di mix up as well. So I really really like that. And uh, Flo is continuing to try and do their thing, but man, Siski, like I, I thought it was over, man. I thought those first 30 seconds, I'm like, yeah, this is a done, like done, 
This is, you know, sign, seal, delivered. This, this set is over. But no, Siski's fighting back, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, the way that Siski is just adjusted has been so good. This is what you need to see before. Now he's catching off the jump. Using Jab one to try and call out a jump two. That was so good. But it, even though it didn't connect, he still got the stock after anyways. And now Siski is up two stocks to one, waking back up here in the set. Uh, this is... This is scary. <laughs> like, what happened all of a sudden? I, I, so obviously what it came down to, it's not a mentality problem. It's Siski's rage and anger coming out in full force, recognizing that that game two could have potentially been theirs. It should have been theirs. And they are working hard to make sure that they do not see game three go to flow. Yo, he almost had the jump read with the grab, and he read that uh, the, the roll in before. Okay, so we talked a lot about Siski of late because he has really turned it up. Flow has to make the adjustments. There you go. Late hit of jab. You snipe the jump. That guarantees you at least get an F tilt, whether it's sweet spot or not. He does get the kill. This could be a 3 0 for Flow if he can stop the bleeding. But the up B is starting to come out. He's starting to get the hit skip. I want to see this move forward because we're seeing Siski finally wake up. I really want to see uh -oh. this get to like a game five. Well, this is kind of what we brought up before. I mean, this is where Roy gets a little bit a rage right and you start to get into those higher percentages it becomes a real problem for you fighting this character but man mashing out that up b getting that screw attack to pop off there a little bit Ooh, they just kept holding shield and they didn't get the punish they wanted but they're definitely working hard here this is getting so scary man Flo can actually turn this around you alluded it to it you alluded to it as well this is an even game like if oh yeah. it's a very even game because Ooh. if you get jab beard you're gonna die if you get caught on ledge from forward scratch you definitely die now your jumps are gone you left it up b but he gets it Platform here, four to punish, but Nair out of shield is gonna put up deep off stage. Siski cannot make a mistake right now. Oh, this is such a scary spot to be in. Oh my god, gets the tech! Gets the right back to stage! Okay, there we go. We gotta ah! <laughs> Siski gets through all of that, puts some more fallout to guarantee that flow stays off stage after all that, and he gets himself to a game four. This should have been one to one before, but Siski ends up stopping the bleeding. Flow's still up 2-1, to one, but Siski has absolutely woken up here. That is 100% a mental check, right? Siski went into that game, and honestly, I don't blame if he was feeling bad. I don't blame anybody for that. I was doubting, but man, Siski coming out, showing us what is up. A huge start and that first stock, right? Huge start, and things got a little bit scary, but they bunkered down. They kept it together, closed it out with that up throw, and that percentage 100% killing on any stage fantastic stuff as we get into the next game here going back to smashville interesting interesting the only thing i can think of is there there so there's a couple stages in here that could be a little questionable to try and fight on with with samus right lila is legal and you have town you don't want to let roy get town so you probably you you 100 ban that and then maybe not feel comfortable against roy on lila because it is significantly better for roy by comparison so going here it's gonna be pretty frank because yeah we saw how well flow did earlier but i if siski can work these le these uh grounded options these tech chases like we saw in that last game it can work out it's just gonna be easy for flow to get it yeah so by my issue is like uh with one thing you said is i don't think town and city is inherently just a boy wins this free i i think it's a both these characters are going to be absolute problems here, and there is no defense. Like, I think that's the huge thing about Town and City. So if Siski wants to, you know, try and play this a little bit slower, I totally get not wanting to go to Town and City. But man, it, it certainly could just be them trading stocks back and forth. But Siski, uh, with the stock here, uh, granted it was on a missed if foot from Flo, but what happened? Hey, well, the age old saying we take those. Like, the air dodge going a little bit too far through and giving up that, st uh, giving up that stock huge for Siski here and now uh Siski has the ability to play out of shield he's starting to slow things down a bit and he's getting a lot of damage but luckily for flow only took 27 percent there on that side all right so there we go it's not too bad he definitely got a little bit of extra credit continues to pile it up here a little bit too got the last hit in that forward air that's huge wasn't able to complete the ledge trap but that's fine you'll take a little bit of damage for your troubles finding your way back on stage with flow really it's up in your face the entire time, man. They do not want to let you out of their uh, out of their bubble. Bro, is it Sunday? I didn't know we were going to see the Holy Ghost. Uh, we, 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 <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> take them to church. <laughs> Let's see. Flo, well, at 108, well, it's still 47%. You get one jab bear uh, that gives you stage decision. and there you go. Now one good. <laughs> As you said it. <laughs> you said, you, now you get one good double-edged dance at ledge on a read by. <laughs> All right, you got you got a you got an earlier stream than I do, huh? <laughs> oh my God. No, this is just look, man. I just I just 
I just, I've seen Roy enough. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That is fair. But yeah, definitely a nice call there. We're going to be able to down smash, taking out that final stock. Last stock situation, Siski's down, but not out, certainly. And they could certainly try to put on some quick damage here. Oh, that's huge. Oh, this could be trouble for Roy. Gets back out to the stage. No problem. Jumps up to the platform as well. Yeah, oh no, this is looking really good for Flo. Siski's gonna try to find his way up, probably short hop fair. No, going for the aggressive morph fall we saw earlier as a mix-up tool. But just empty jumping! Why would you empty jump with no hitbox in front of Roy? What are you doing? Flo's gonna go deep off stage, trying to go and catch him, but plenty of recovery options here. Siski makes it back just barely somehow after what was a pretty chaotic option. So they were going for a charge shot there. It's just, it was too slow. Roy just goes too fast, right? So that was definitely an issue. Oh my goodness. I understand why to go for it, but now you potentially just gave Siski all the stage. He almost <laughs> runs right into that charge blast as well. This is a problem spot for Flo. Not gonna die to the forge bash. Uh oh. Yeah, but here we go, covering the ledge. Trying to catch him on a roll in with the dash attack, but keeping himself safe. Cover the jump. No, decides to go for roll coverage again. That was three roll coverages in a row, which led to a whiff. And that led to Flo taking it out here over Siski, popping up, taking the W. And once again, another shift in things. Now, Flo is somebody you'd expect to see up at the top. But taking it and getting a spot in winner's finals over Siski with no Gluto in this bracket. This is looking really good for Flo to potentially take the whole thing the way that he just took out Siski. Yeah, dude, I think, I think that should have been a down smash earlier instead of a, a forward smash. That's just like... I would agree with that too, because he, Cause he like went the for the angle. The angle that could be at is just so gross. Yeah, and like he, right before that, he so he went for forward air on tech chase before, or excuse me, roll read before, and then he went for dash attack, and then he did it again, almost as like I won't do it again type mix up. But you did it three times in a row on last game, so in Flo's mind, especially in chaotic position, he's probably gonna be thinking you're looking for it again. And Siski looks for it, he whiffs. I think the down smash play, if you're uh, like what you said, works too, because if he gets up in front of that, the back hit forces Flo to put shield up. So you're not dying there. And that would have potentially kept him in it, but hindsight is 2020, and it's going to be Flo moving forward. 3 1, it could have been a game five, considering that Honestly. game two, 